All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I'm going to start this series uh, uh, making the case for today being the last day. All right, I'm not saying today is the last day, but today might be the last day. So let's approach the Bible as though today is the last day. And let's make a case for why today is the last day. All right, and so typically what I like to do is show the spirit of air and then show the spirit of truth. All right, so I'm just going to play a short clip here. Better make today count. According to some predictions, tomorrow will be the end of the world. All right, this is a phenomenon we've heard about time and time again, and although it has not come true yet, it's something that never seems to go away. Sharon Crowley takes a closer look at why we are so obsessed with the idea of doomsday. I've also been told that the 24th of September 2022 will be the end times or the Great Awakening. If you haven't heard, check out social media. Conspiracies abound. The end of the world is coming sooner than you think. TikTokers predict September 24th is doomsday. It all stems from a German politician's post forecasting something is about to happen. Yeah, <clears throat> that's not that interesting. Um, uh, first of all, I think a lot of people actually are looking for the news to tell them when the end of the world is going to happen. They view the television as a prophet of God. And the words of God. And uh, that's what I think. And that's never going to happen. All right, Dan Rather is never going to come on TV and tell you, hey, the end of the world is coming. That's not going to happen. All right, and so also, you're never going to see uh, Peter Jennings come on TV and say, hey, the Antichrist is here. Hey, we're about to enter a seven-year tribulation. That's never going to happen, and that's not even in the Bible. All right. You, that's never going to happen. That TV is nothing but f lies. And uh, I'm being serious about that. Now, if you want the truth, all you have to do is look in the Bible. And so let's get into the truth. Let me make the case for today being the very last day. All right, first of all, in Matthew 24... You know, the disciples come to Jesus and they ask him privately, saying, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they're curious, just like me. I'm curious. When is this world coming to an end? I can't wait. Really. I mean, I can. I'm going to make the most out of each and every day. And I'm going to enjoy each and every day. It's easier to do so knowing that, hey, this wretchedness filthiness is not forever all right it's easier to deal with knowing that uh, these wicked people will not stand forever okay anyways even my own wickedness won't last forever right because i'm just as guilty as anybody else but glory to god and thanks be to god we have eternal life in Christ Jesus right and we look forward to a world where there is no sin no death no sorrow no crying no more pain all those things will be done away with so we're, we got hope for something much much better but while we're here it's um, interesting to me that when you look at this, when you look at the Bible, when you read the Bible and believe it, and you see it, you see that today could be the day. There's nothing holding us back. Right? And in particular, the very first thing Jesus says when he's asked about the sign of his coming and of the end of the world, he says, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. The very first thing. So this is going to get worse and worse and worse. People saying they believe in Jesus, 
and deceiving deceiving themselves and deceiving your children their children deceiving many all right if that's true and today's the last day then you take a look at all the churches in your area and you see these big mega churches maybe you've got a, some churches with over 100 people over 500 people over 50 people and all those churches every single one of them are all full of deceivers what if that's true <clears throat> are you sure that that's not true I mean you can't know who's saved and who's not saved can you think about this Jesus is saying I mean, if you believe Jesus you believe him don't you he says that many will come in my name saying that I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many right so let's go to Matthew chapter 7 I want you to take note here Jesus says, <clears throat> Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. It's in, these people that he's talking about are people that say they believe in Jesus Christ. And not only do they say they believe in Jesus Christ, they prophesy, they teach the Bible. They teach things of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So, that's what's going on in the churches, right? How do you discern? How do you discern who's really saved and who's not? Well, and I, you know, I asked this question uh, to um, an elderly gentleman a few weeks ago. Uh, his response was, you shall know them by their fruits. Okay. You shall know them by their fruits here. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Oh, that's mine the same. <laughs> I could have just went like this. Okay. Alright. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. This is speaking of false prophets. Alright. And then, what's the other one here? One or another one? Well, anyways. Um, go up here. Anyways, you know, the... Here. <laughs> Let's... I want to make this clear. I don't want to leave anything to doubt. Right? Don't want to leave anything to doubt. So, the fruit of the Spirit is love... What are you doing? Okay. Uh, Galatians 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. All right, so now uh, it, to me it's just interesting. Okay, so you can't know who is saved or not saved. When you talk about love, um, when Jesus talks about uh, what reward have you if you love them which love you, let's see if I can get close to this. Let's see how far off I am here. All right. Um, there it is. I knew it was in five. 
Matthew 5. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? When I mean, you think about you know publicans, if you don't understand what that is, you, you can equate that to anybody. You really can't. Je the fact that Jesus is referring to a particular group, to them, this is applicable to anybody, right? You can you could apply that to Satanists. You can apply that to Mormons. You can apply that to Muslims. You can apply that to uh, you know fans of the New York Yankees or fans of the Chicago Cubs. They love those that love them. Right, there's no reward. There's nothing special to love somebody that loves you. There's no reward in that, and so this is um, why he teaches us to love even them that hate you and despise you. Love even your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's love that can only come from above. All right. So, um, go back to Matthew 7 here. You can't know who's saved and who's not saved. Right? You can't. You can wish and hope, boy, I hope that person's saved. But you can't know. I, I, you can know if you're saved. But beyond that, no. You can't know the heart of another man. And that's a good thing, I think. It, you know, you could think of it as a bad thing, but <clears throat> it's also a good thing. All right? So here we have people teaching the Bible in the name of Jesus Christ and casting out devils you know helping them with their drug addiction their alcoholism their sexual immortality uh, immorality uh, you know cheating on their wife you know, marriage problems and all this and that anger issues and blah, and all sorts of whatevers casting out devils in the name of Jesus Christ Right? And they do they do many wonderful works. They do a lot of good things in the community. In the name of Jesus Christ. No question about it. And then will Jesus profess unto them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Never, never, never knew you. That means they're never saved, even though they were calling Jesus, you know, Lord and Savior. They were professing and confessing the Lord Jesus. They were never saved. They were teaching in the name of Jesus, doing many wonderful works, and they were never saved at any point. Why is that? Well, the reason why they were going to church and doing all these good things is because they wanted to present themselves as good people. It's pretty simple, isn't it? They wanted to present themselves as worthy to receive the kingdom of heaven. But they're, they're not. None of us are. We are all 100% at the mercy of God. We're not in control. We can be as good as we can possibly be, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it's all that matters is what God chooses. He either chooses us or he doesn't. And the only thing that we can do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these people here, they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe their good works are going to make them worthy enough for the kingdom. You see the difference? If you don't, you're probably not saved. Okay. As for me, for example, I...
came to a point in my life where I knew I couldn't do it. I can't do it. I'm one. <laughs> I'm a miserable human being, and I've got no chance. I got no chance. No chance for eternal life to make it beyond this life. I got no chance, and I can't. I can't even be a good person. I'm trying, you know, I try. I can try, but I'm not. I need a savior. I do. And you gotta give it all up. And you gotta just say, whatever it is that you're holding on to, it's not worth it. Just give it all up. Throw it all away. And just believe. That's it. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Because uh, nothing in this world is worth holding on to. We've got no chance without without Jesus. Okay. All right. So I want you to consider this. All the people in the churches today are not saved. All of them. And that has to be the case if today's the last day. Maybe, maybe all is a strong word maybe all is not strong enough all right let me let me make the case all right let me make the case I, I I just gave an example of people saying they believe in Jesus saying that Jesus is the Christ and deceiving many and here's an example of people saying Lord Lord and teaching and casting out devils and doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus and they're not saved right now I want you to consider this in the days of Noah in the days of Noah all right in the days of Noah <clears throat> uh, there's what I estimate and I think it's a fair estimation is that there's 25 billion people on the earth during the days of Noah and and of those 25 billion eight souls were saved all right eight souls <clears throat> eight souls were saved out of tw 25 billion there's what seven eight nine billion people today and of course the Catholics claim one billion over one billion people all right and um you think when jesus comes there's going to be a billion people saved well i want you to consider this now seriously think about this in genesis 18 abraham is negotiating with God. God says, I'm going to destroy this place. Sodom, talking about Sodom and Gomorrah in the cities roundabout, specifically Sodom. All right, so Abraham says, Look, Lord, what, what if there's 50 righteous? You're going to destroy the whole city? What about the 50? Here, I think, I think that's what's going on. No, right there. Yeah. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? See, Abraham's wanting to negotiate with God and say, Hey, look, don't do that to those fifty. Don't do that to your people. There's, there might be fifty in there. and Don't do that to them. Don't destroy them. And let's, let me read this. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Basically saying, that's not right, God. That's not right. Don't destroy the wicked, or I'm sorry, don't destroy the righteous as though they were the wicked. And so the Lord said, okay, all right, I'll, I'll work with you on this. 
If there be 50 righteous within the city, I will spare all the place for their sakes. And so that had to feel pretty good, right, for Abraham to say, All right, he's gonna, God's going to work with me on this. And as Abraham's thinking about it, he's going, well, Wait a second now. I've been to that place, man. I, I know that place pretty good. And, uh, boy, I don't know. I don't know if there are 50 righteous in that city. All right. Now, I want you to think about this. As I walk you through this, I want you to think about the world that we're in now. Do you think that there are a billion people saved right now? No, okay, no. All right. Well, how about a half a billion? No. How about a hundred million? You think there are a hundred million people? Saved people on the earth right now? I don't. Not even close. I mean, <clears throat> if if there are a hundred million people on the saved people on the earth right now, you forget about Jesus ever coming in your lifetime. There's no way. There's absolutely no way that the end of the world will come right now with that many saved people. Yeah, and I'm using this as an example because I I would guess that there was about thirty million people in Sodom. You want to dispute that? I don't care what the scholars say, the experts. That's what I, I think. There's millions, and you consider Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities around about well over fifty million people. I think this was a lot of people, and there's no reason to think that there wasn't a lot of people, because population can grow very quick. And I, I I'm not going to go through that, but I've gone through it before. I've walked you through how you can have over two hundred million people you can go from two to over 200 million people in 100 years easy i mean um it and, and then you go to another 100 years the numbers get ridiculous all right so i don't want to hear no i don't i'm not buying anybody that says well there just wasn't that many people back then not buying that at all uh, and I don't want to get into the whole thing. I would like to get into the whole thing about population and how there are too many people are dying today. If something's going on. Population should be exploding, and it's not. And it's not because families are only having one or two babies. There's something wrong with this world. Very, very wrong. Anyways, I don't want to get into that. I want you to. I want you to think about this and think about the world that we're in right now. See, I don't think there's a hundred million people saved on the earth right now. I don't think there's a million people saved in the whole world today. I don't think there's a hundred thousand people saved. I don't. Th I don't think there's ten thousand people saved. Yeah, and I really a thousand people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, but if you told me there's less than 20 people saved in the entire world today, I would have to admit you might be right. The number might even be less than that. And I want you to consider that. I want you to consider, are there 20 people saved in the world today? Now I want you to think about that. I'm going to walk you through this, and, and I'm going to share that same number, 20, with you. All right, but we're going to go back to Matthew 24 real quick. And I want you to also consider this verse. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, if God allows things to play out as they are, there would come a point to where no man would be saved. Nobody would be saved. Why? Not because of wars and famines and earthquakes and all that sort of stuff. It's because of all the deception 
that is in the world. And because of, you know, because of the lack of faith, people would rather believe in the deceivers rather than God Almighty. And isn't that what we see today? That's what I'm seeing. So I don't even know if there's 20 people saved today. But I want you to think about 20 people being saved. Are there 20 people saved in the entire world of all the languages, in all the countries, all around the world? Are there 20 saved? Again, you don't know who's saved. But you ought to know who, if you're saved. You ought to know if you have eternal life right now. You ought to know if God has given you the judgment of eternal life. You should know that. Excuse me. <coughs> All right, so let's get into this. So Abraham is ne negotiating with God, saying, hey, if there's 50, don't destroy the righteous with the wicked. And then he gets to thinking about it, and he said, well, wait a second. Now, I've been to that stinking place. There's a whole bunch of filth. I mean, those bunch of perverts all around every corner. Just filthiness up and down. I don't know that there's 50 people, if I'm being honest with myself. So, Lord, what, what, if, what if there's not quite 50? What if there's only 45? Will you destroy this place? Because it, we we come up just short of fifty. Peradventure there should lack five of the fifty. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, "If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it." So, so we're we're negotiating. We're working. We're working this out, right? Excuse me. <coughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So, and so the more Abraham thinks about it, the more he realizes, man, I'm just not real confident that there are 45 people. And so he gets that, he says, well, what if there's only 40? And the Lord says, okay, if there's 40, all right. And then uh, <laughs> and Abraham starts to get nervous. He's, well, what about 30? Right. He says, don't get angry with me, Lord. I, what if there's only 30? Just for the sake of arguing. What if there's only 30? And the Lord says, okay, for 30 I won't destroy it. And Abraham, I think he's kind of, he's backpedaling, right? And he's kind of thinking, man, the more and more I think about this, man, there's not hardly anybody righteous that I can think of I mean that place is just full of stink and filth so let's get this number down to 20 all right so what happens God says okay all right if there's 20 I won't destroy it see God's not hard to work with right and uh, finally <clears throat> Abraham's like gee whiz I don't even know if there's 20. If I don't even know if there's 10. But I said, Lord, don't be angry with me. Let me speak just this one. So let's say there's only 10. Uh, you can't go, you know, you go from 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. You can't really go much lower than that, can you? So even God says, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. And so what happened? <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know. But yeah, I don't know. There wasn't even ten righteous in that place. Not even ten. So are there ten righteous in the world today? Well, of course there is. Are you sure about that? Are you sure? Are there ten saved people in the world today? If... Today's the last day. Will there be ten saved people on the entire earth? 
If there was, if if what I say is true, there was 25 billion people in the days of Noah, and only eight were saved. And then today we have what seven, eight billion people. Well, if you do the math, that's a that's a third of the population of the earth in the days of Noah. So a third of eight would be what maybe three people <laughs> being generous, right? Maybe maybe there are three saved people. Now again, I have to go back to Matthew twenty four. Verse 22, and except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. There's no reason at all to believe that there will be more than three. No reason at all. Now I want you to consider this. In Luke chapter 18... All right, in Luke chapter 18, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? That's a heck of a question, isn't it? And that's suggesting that maybe nobody on earth will be saved. Or to even ask that question. So you want to say there's what 100 million people saved today? Then today can't be the last day. Number one, this question would never be asked if there was that many saved people on the earth. Shall he find faith on the earth? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, when it's the end of the world, will he find faith on the earth? I mean, my guess is there has to be at least two people. Right, I'd have to, I'd make a strong case that there has to be at least two people saved, okay? And the reason I say that is because of First uh, Thessalonians four, where it says, "Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds." All right, so we indicates plural, meaning more than one. All right, so I think there's got to be at least two people in order for Paul's words to be true here in 1 Thessalonians 4. But I still, at the same time, I think it's a fair question. When you got two, three people that are alive and saved in a world of eight billion people, I think that's a fair question to ask. Shall he find faith on the earth? Again, I don't want you to forget verse 22 and except those days be short and there should no flesh be saved so we're leading up to a point to where nobody zero people would be saved on the earth before that happens God is going to shorten the days and like what we read in in uh, Genesis 18 there wasn't even ten righteous and w w what are we doing imagining that everybody's saved today that says that they believe in Jesus all these churches that are jumping up and down and shouting hallelujah you think they're saved why why would you think that remember what we read here in Matthew 7 not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of, of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven and that is to believe and you think about all these people, and I'll get more into this as I continue this, but I mean, if we were to <clears throat> really tighten down the restrictions for who's saved and who's not saved, um, I think one of the first places that I would start would be those that don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands, right? You think about that. Think about that. This is the will of my Father is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? <laughs> and, <clears throat> and so how can you say that you believe in God, but you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? You're a liar and a deceiver. And 
that's uh, exactly what we're warned about over and over uh, all throughout the Bible right many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially they of the circumcision for many deceivers are entered into the world right for uh, what's the what's the verse I'm looking for wax deceive wax deceive but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived <clears throat> all right so this is getting worse and worse and worse right and just like what we read in Matthew 7 and Ma Matthew 24 as well false Christ and false prophets they shall deceive the very elect so again we see example after example of deceivers deceiving and being deceived all right all right so one of the things that uh, I'll get into here as we move as we progress through this you know God willing because if today's the last day then I won't be doing a video tomorrow right all right so let's just say one of the uh, signs of somebody not being saved is a person that does not believe the Bible they hold in their hands anybody that points to the Greek or the Hebrew why would they do that if they believed the Bible that they hold in their hands uh, if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands you do not believe the Word of God you're believing in the words of men right and of course uh, it's probably pretty easy to say that all these people that reject eternal security that reject the one saved always saved um, none of them are saved not even close and then all these people that um, tell you that you got to keep the law they're not saved because they don't keep the law they're hypocrites hypocrites and liars and then uh, another indication would be I mean if you do if you did that if you eliminated all the people that did not believe the Bible and that they hold in their hands that would be a significance significance cut uh, cut down and then let's say all the people that don't believe the Pope is the Antichrist so, all right there we go there's another indication I right, could that's the same thing as not believing the Bible in your that you hold in your hands right, anybody that uh, goes uh, follows along with the Catholic Church or the Mormon Church or Islam any of that stuff right putting their trust in men and not God that would be another indication and then all these people that are preaching a seven-year tribulation that's not in the Bible all these people that are preaching a thousand year reign after Jesus comes in clouds of heaven that's not only is that not in the Bible you're putting your hope into something that it does not exist and that's based on um, you know your sexual fantasies uh, if you eliminate all those people you kind of you kind of narrow it down to just those people that believe the Bible that they hold on their hands in it and that's not very many all right. not very many people at all all right so um God willing I, I do this uh, tomorrow I'm gonna try to get more into really making everybody mad and really narrowing the number down as little as possible because I want you to consider this, man. Consider this. In Matthew chapter 6 says, oh, says something. It does. I guarantee you. Matthew 7 so also says something. And I'm not even sure what it says, but I think it says something. There it is. Okay. Let's see what it says here. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, <clears throat> do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate. 
For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many be, and many there be that, I'm sorry, and many there be which go in thereat. All right, so uh, this is a clear indication that a lot of people will not be saved. Very few will be. <coughs> oh my goodness sakes. I apologize for that. Gee whiz. All right, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Right? Straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. So you want to say, oh, well, you can believe in Mormonism. You can believe in Islam and Buddhism and uh, Catholicism. And you can believe whatever you want. You can believe that you're going to spend a thousand years ruling over unsaved people and having sexual orgies and all you can believe whatever you want the truth doesn't matter don't worry god's gonna straighten it all out uh I, you know i can't no 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 the truth matters the truth absolutely matters absolutely matters are you kidding me? You think about, have you ever seen these people? They're all over. I mean, no, I'm not kidding you. They say, well, it doesn't matter. You know, you know, some people say this and some people say that. And it doesn't matter. We all sort of believe what we want to believe and the truth doesn't matter. No, 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 no. It matters. You know, whether it's eschatology, it matters. What are you putting your hope into? It matters. Absolutely matters. What Bible are you reading? It matters. It absolutely matters. And it's all these things that are written in the Word of God, in the book of the Lord. In the book of God, all these things matter. God matters. And I'm not buying it all for a second that it doesn't matter. I'm not buying it for a second that it's okay to be wrong. I'm not buying that at all. It's not okay to be wrong. I recognized that years ago. That's why I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, because I know I'm wrong and I know it's not okay. Now here comes the devil going to tell me it's okay to be wrong. No, it's not okay. It was never okay. It's never okay to be wrong. And so that's that's why I want to know what's right. That's why I'm trying to find what's right. I, I'm tired of being wrong. I want to know what's right. So what is right? Well, what's right is the Word of God. The Word of God. The Book of God. The Word of the Lord. The Book of the Lord. That's what is right. It comes directly from God. And without that understanding, you're not gonna. Uh, it, without that, um, without how do I say that? Without believing the word of God, you're not gonna understand. You know, even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. See, the key is faith. It's always been about faith, believing in God, believing in the Word of God, believing in the Spirit of God, believing in eternal life, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You think about how many people actually believe. And I don't think it's that many. I think people are deceiving themselves. And there's no way to know. But... The fact of the matter is, if we are in the last days, then there's not very many people saved. If today's the last day, there's not, there's no reason to really even think that there's 
A hundred people saved in the world today. If today's the last day. So, look, I, I don't know what people are holding on to. There's no way for me to know. But whatever it is, let it go. This world's coming to an end. First John chapter 3 or 2. Somewhere in the Bible it says, Love not the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth for ever.